like order labeling is in and of itself a massive thing. Yeah, uh, because it's huge. Yeah, and we have like I think fifteen hundred human labelers. Wow. Uh, wow. Yeah, wow. but 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 they're amplified probably by a factor of a thousand by the order labeling. Okay. At least a factor of a hundred. Wow. So it's more like having one hundred fifty thousand labels. Right. Exactly. Uh, it's like it's a lot. Like this fa factory is losing insane money right now. Because we can't make it, we, we, like, because we, um, like we should be uh, outputting a lot more cars from this factory versus a very puny amount of cars. Um, but we had challenges with the 4680 ramp mm -hmm. and with the structural pack ramp. Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, David L. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. Real quick, on my comments yesterday about me hoping for depressed Tesla stock prices for the next year, I do have some things that I want to share based on a few comments I got yesterday. That will be toward the end of the video. Check the timestamps below. First up today, just real quick, these headlines are getting a lot of play. People talking about Tesla is too reliant on the Shanghai market because, you know, 50% of deliveries are in that market. Well, right now, Tesla only has two mostly fully operational factories. Fremont and Shanghai. So obviously 50% of its current production will be there. But are these people not remembering that there's Austin and Berlin? So within the next two years, this number should most likely be down to 25% of Tesla's production actually coming from Shanghai. So I'm really not worried about that market, but let's just remember that. Garrett Nelson from CFRA released a new note on Tesla. This just stands for Centers for Financial Research and Analysis. Garrett said investors should not shy away from this highly attractive entry point and Tesla shares have recently gone on sale. Tesla is one of the market's most compelling growth stories and investment with long-term return potential. He said Tesla has been unfairly punished by the market and the company is not being given credit for several key positives in the story. That includes exceptional operational and earnings execution, potential production growth from Austin and Berlin, I would remove the word potential, and dramatic balance sheet improvement and an impressive pipeline of future products. He did say Tesla could surprise the markets by releasing the Cybertruck and the Semi sooner. However, given what we know about the 4680 ramp and the supply chain, I would not be so optimistic I really don't think we'll see any consistent production of these vehicles until the back half of 2023. We have some conflicting reports about a shutdown at Giga Shanghai at the beginning of July for renovations and upgrades to increase the production capacity. So let's try to get to the bottom of this. We have this tweet from 42 Howe saying that Giga Shanghai will be stopped for a renovation from July 1st to July 4th, with the main purpose being increasing Model Y production line, which will have a daily capacity after the renovation of around 2,000 vehicles, Previously, it was in the neighborhood of 1,550 Model Ys per day. Translating this image, it's telling us the shutdown will be from July 1st to July 4th. Then we get this Reuters exclusive saying Tesla is planning a two week suspension for most of Shanghai production for this upgrade. Reuters is getting its information from an internal memo. So if that's the case, unless something is getting lost in translation, one would assume this is a different memo than what we just translated. Either way though, in the long run, it doesn't matter whether it's a few days or a few weeks. Let's talk about why they're shutting down in the first place. Shanghai is aiming to boost the plant's output to a new record high by the end of July to get closer to its goal of producing 22,000 cars per week in Shanghai times four, yes, that would be around 88,000 cars per month. The COVID shutdown delayed Tesla's original plan of hitting these figures. The breakdown would be 8,000 Model 3s and 14,000 Model Ys. They were looking to hit that by mid-May. Obviously, that did not happen. So not a ton of clarity here, but it looks like Giga Shanghai looking to upgrade the Model Y line to take the total factory output to around 22,000 units per week. That figure would include Model 3 production as well. So if you assume 50 weeks of production, for the year, giving two weeks for shutdown, holidays, other things, that would be an annual run rate of around 1.1 million units from the Shanghai factory. Moving on, in yesterday's video, we literally asked for an up-close image of Tesla's new Megacharger connector, and we get one. 
So here it is, but if you recall, it is looking different than the new MCS standard mega charger that was just released by Charin. In case you missed yesterday's video, we'll do some inception for you and go back. This is the new MCS standard for mega charging globally that has been released. And going back, this is what Tesla is currently using at the Frito-Lay site, so why the difference? In case you're not familiar with Charin and this new global mega charging standard, make sure you watch yesterday's video, I will link it above. However, doing some digging, I found this. Version 3.2, this is the new mega charger connector that we talked about in yesterday's video, and this was seemingly released on June 8th, 2022. I was also able to find this megawatt charging system geometry, and this should look very familiar. This is the exact connector that Tesla is using currently at the Frito-Lay site. And if you scroll down, you'll see the date for this one. It was earlier, February 26th of 2022. So this square version seems to be an older model that Tesla is currently using. So it seems as though this triangular version is the most updated, most recent version of the mega charging standard. Tesla is just using an older version or an older iteration. So possibly in the future, Tesla will upgrade new mega charging sites to use this new latest version, but only time will tell. The good news though, it seems like Tesla is involved with this new global standard. So when it comes to mega charging, it's not going to be Tesla doing its own thing and then everybody else doing something else, which is great because we need more standardization. Ahead of the midterm elections, it looks like the EV tax credit is back on the table, albeit with some changes. Democrats have scrapped the $4,500 bonus tax credit for EVs made with union labor and referring to that union portion, Manchin said it's gone. Joe Britton, the head of Zeta said, at this point, what we are left with is the base credit. Conversations about lifting an existing 200,000 vehicle per manufacturer cap on the credit remain ongoing. And because US companies like Tesla and GM have already gone over the cap so they no longer have the credit, Manchin said any foreign vehicle that's an EV is going to be able to claim this $7,500 credit under existing law. I don't think that's our intent. So it's true that if the cap is not removed, then proportionately the government is going to be spending money to subsidize foreign made electric vehicles here in America, which definitely should not be the goal. Look, there are so many ways to argue if this tax credit should pass or not. Elon doesn't want it as in its current form, it's a competitive disadvantage for Tesla since Tesla already reached the cap and most other automakers have not putting Tesla at a disadvantage. You can talk about the demand for EVs already being strong and outpacing production, so this credit isn't really needed. Or you could argue the point of the credit is to help incentivize automakers to make and sell more EVs, shifting the focus away from the consumer benefit to the producer benefit. You can argue the planet needs to reduce carbon emissions, so if we're going to spend money, let's spend it on that. You can also argue there are better ways to spend money to further EV adoption like charging. There are also reports that the base credit would be bumped to $8,000, and if the per manufacturer cap is lifted, as someone wanting to buy a Tesla, this would be a massive win, and ultimately what most future Tesla owners would be hoping for. You get the point. It's a nuanced conversation, and there are many different angles to look at this. This was an article from the New York Times. I only wanna highlight this one line. In 2019, many auto experts said Tesla was making a big mistake by deciding to sell cars only online, now we're starting to see the entire industry try to move that way. Really wish we had the prediction tracker back in 2019. In case you missed it, cars.com came out with its most American-made vehicles top 10 list and all Tesla models falling in the top six, rounding out the top 10, the Odyssey and the Pilot. Tesla is the only major automaker to claim 100% domestic production for all cars it sells in the US, well above the industry's roughly 52% average. Please spread the word to all of your friends and family. And yes, Tesla on Twitter backing up this statistic and Elon reminding everybody that hardly anyone knows this. Somehow, some way, I have no idea. Plenty of work to be done. And I thought this map was cool showing where these top American made cars are actually manufactured. Trying to contextualize the Berlin and China employee ramp at Tesla, Elon was asked, how long will there be a net headcount reduction at all? Elon confirmed probably only a few months. 
Texas State is looking to set aside $408 million for EV charging infrastructure over the next five years. And they're saying each location will have at least four units with pull-through spaces for passenger vehicles, pulling trailers, or recreational vehicles. And Austin and other major cities have invited investment from The Boring Company to ease congestion and reduce emissions. Speaking of The Boring Company, yesterday we got this official application in the city of Austin dated June 21st, titled Colorado River Connect tunnel, the applicant is proposing private access tunnel. It's not exactly clear what this most recent application will be for specifically, but going back just a few weeks, we learned that Elon's boring company had pitched eight different plans for projects in Texas. So the story here is that the boring company seems to be heavily involved in Texas, and that's going to continue going forward. The new Model Y standard range out of Austin with 4680s has been increased in price, $2,000 up to $61,900. $990. No, this is not yet an official option on the Tesla website configurator. This is only being offered to current Model Y order holders who may be wanting to take delivery a little bit sooner if they accept this vehicle instead of a long range or perhaps in other cases performance Model Y. Germany has rejected the EU's plan to push for banning new fossil fuel cars by 2035. Honestly though, I'm not sure if this is even going to matter. Based on how things are going, most of the industry is already moving toward electrification and over the next 13 or so years, how many fossil fuel cars in terms of new car sales will there be? I'm sure there will be some, but it doesn't seem like there will be a majority. Here we have Ford warning of significant job cuts over in Europe. Ford planning significant staffing cuts even at the Spanish plant in Valencia where it will make future EVs because electric cars need fewer staff to build them. This move by Ford means Czar Louis, which currently has around 4,600 staff, is the only current Ford vehicle plant in the region that has not been allocated to EVs for the future. This plant currently makes the Ford Focus that's set to stop production sometime around 2025. Ford has around 40,000 employees in the region and has already cut around 12,000 jobs across Europe as sales fall and Ford tries to increase profit margins. Toyota has cut its July global production forecast by 50,000 units, citing the usual culprits. Don't forget, Polestar's SPAC merger with GGPI could be completed as soon as Thursday as the shareholders will be voting. If everything goes through, then Polestar will be trading under the ticker PSNY as soon as this Friday. And lastly, just want to comment on my comment from yesterday about hoping for depressed Tesla stock prices for the next year or so, so I can accumulate at great prices. First, please, I just wanna clarify, I would never ever wish financial hardship on anyone. If you've been on the channel for any amount of time, you should know this, but I want to make that clear. Second, I wanna differentiate between paper losses and real losses. As long as you don't sell, you don't actually lose money. When the stock is up, you don't actually earn that money once again until you sell. So there needs to be a distinction between these two. Also, it's called a stock market for a reason. There are buyers and sellers. I'm not at all saying I think everybody should want the stock to go down. I'm just saying personally, that's the situation I'm in because I'm in accumulation mode with no plans of selling or liquidating those shares anytime in the near future. Now, I did not wanna come off as inconsiderate. I understand some people may be older. Some people may need that money right now. Some people may just be feeling stressed out because maybe they are over leveraged or whatever the case. I no, situationally, there are people that really want or need Tesla stock to go up now. Just generally speaking, I personally think that expectations and timeframes have become totally skewed. I see many investors who expect stocks to move 20, 30, 40% in a matter of months or even a year, when historically we would be happy with, you know, eight to 15% returns over a year. That has worked out to be the average. Look, ultimately the financial advisor in me just wants all of you to invest wisely. Don't take on more risk than you need to. Don't be impatient looking for huge returns right now. Historically speaking, investing entails timeframes of five years, 10 years, 15 years, and requires patience. And the truth remains on most, if not all, five, 10, 15 year time horizons investing in Tesla stock, you're doing incredibly well. And this last comment, I promise you, it comes from a place of love, but 
If your conviction in Tesla stock is swayed due to the price fluctuations in the short term, then I have to tell you, you're not as convicted in Tesla the company as you may think that you are. But that'll do it for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.